Shalom, all praises to the Most High Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As always, we'll start with Colossians 3 and 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all by Hashem of Mashiach Kelbashah. Giving thanks to the Most High and the Father by Hashem of Mashiach Kelbashah. So all that we say is going to be in the name of the anointed Savior. Going to the throne of the Most High by Hashem of Mashiach Kelbashah. That's how we reach the spiritual power from the Most High. Always. And we thank the Most High for everything because He's worthy to be praised for everything. Now, I want to go into uh, going over the laws today. I want to go into uh, the book of Deuteronomy, the 11th chapter. And we're going to look at uh, this chapter pertaining to uh, a lot of things, you know, concerning the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and how we are to remember him and to exalt him and highly exalt him. He got to rise. Before anything is going to rise, the Most High going to rise because the Most High is sitting on the right hand side of the Most High. The Most High not standing while he's sitting; he's sitting on the sitting on his throne. You got a Most High sitting on the right hand side of the Most High. So the Most High has to rise. Go tell a Most High to rise, and Israel going to rise. Understand this? That's why you be saying Crum Abanawa Yahweh, Crum Most High and Crum Yasharala. That's what David always prayed for rise most high you know so we need him to rise while the spirit is bringing out we got to cry to the most high that he may deliver us from the hand of our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us that's being saved we read that in luke the first chapter the 68th verse to the seven first verse so let's got a deuteronomy the 11th chapter verse one it says therefore Thou shalt love the Most High thy power and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. So, we see in this, and he told us in uh, Deuteronomy 10 and 12, he said, And now, Israel, what does the Most High thy power require of thee but to fear the Most High thy power and to walk in all his ways and to love him and to love him walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the most high thy power that's your power that's a personal possessive pro pronoun showing ownership Yasharala said and to love him and to serve the most high thy power your power with all thy heart that's your heart is the mind and all thy soul, every fiber of your spirit. To keep his commandments of the most to keep the commandments of the most high and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Behold, the heaven and the earth, to me, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the most highs. Thy power, your power, Israel. The earth also, with all that therein is. Only the Most High had a delight in thy fathers to love them. He chose their seed after them, even you, above all people, as it is today, as it is this day. I love the way it says, as it is this day, because he's telling us that he loves us above all people as it is this day. Circumcise therefore your foreskin of your heart. So we 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 circumcise the boys on the eighth day, or they shrove them. So now he's telling us to circumcise our minds, get our minds together, and be not and be no more stiff necked. Don't be hard headed and stiff necked, and don't believe in the Most High. Like most do, if you go to religion, you don't. You're taught you're not under the law. You're taught you're a Gentile. You're taught you've been grafted in, but you don't know any answers of that. To proving that in the Bible. Because you don't ask them to prove it. You just go by what you've heard. And that comes from the religious instructions to the Negroes in the United States of America. In 1620. Came in 1619, 1620. They had that together. This is how we're going to program them. And this program has worked all the way until this day. All the way until this day. Verse 17. For the most high, your power is the power of powers and Lord of lords. A great power. A mighty and a terrible. Hear that? A mighty and a terrible. You know that about him? Or you think he's just all love? 
was regarded not persons. He didn't have no respect to persons, nor take a reward. Nothing you can give him. He does execute the judgment of the fatherless and the widow, the, and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment, taking care of him. Love you therefore the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. So, going back to Deuteronomy 11 and 1, it said, Therefore thou shalt love the Most High thy power, and keep his charge, and his statutes, and his judgments, and his commandments, always. Look at Zechariah 3 and 7. Zechariah 3 and 7. Thus said the most high power of hosts, power of armies, this power of angels. If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house. That's the children of Israel who live in a house, family, family of Israel, lights. And shall also keep my courts. And I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. See? Tell us all we got to do is just follow his rules and regulations. Do what he say do. Deuteronomy 11 and 2. And know ye this day, for I speak not with your children which have not known and which have not seen the chastisement of the Most High, your power, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his stretched out arm. So he tell them the children have seen this. Therefore he told us in Psalms 78 and 5. Go there, Psalm 78 and 5. He said, our children hadn't seen his uh, chastisement. They hadn't seen his greatness, his mighty hand, and his stretched out arm. The children had seen, that's why he told us this in Psalm 78 and 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. So he established a testimony in Jacob, who was the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel, and appointed a law in Israel, appointed a law to we the twelve tribes of Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. That's why he say, that's why he telling us in verse two of Deuteronomy eleven chapter, and know ye this day, for I speak not with your children, which have not known, and which have not seen the chastisement of the Most High, your power, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his stretched out arm. The children hadn't seen this. They're small, you know, like a little child, can I go remember all these things? So that's why he's telling us in Psalms 78 and 5, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generations to come might know them, even the children which should be born who should arise and declare them to their children. So you're supposed to learn the laws of the Most High. Then you declare them to your children. Then they, so they can declare them to their children. But see, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't establish this because of the fact of um, going through captivity after captivity after captivity, especially this captivity that we came coming here to America, or them coming to America, taking us off our land, and going to get some of us from a foreign land to bring us here. This is what it says, Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hosea 4 and 6. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. We bring in the knowledge in these last days that have been bringing it for years and years and years and years. And you reject knowledge. I will also reject thee. So you're going to be a bunch of rejects. He said he's going to reject you. That thou shalt not be no priest to me. That's why you see these preachers are not bringing forth the edification of our people. Let them know that they are the children of Israel. You know, if they know, then they got a sugar coat or some kind of way that they can still have their 501c3, their nonprofit, and get to receive the benefits of that and still deal with what they have to deal with in bringing forth a little of this truth. Because it ain't, it ain't the unadulterated truth. As we bring it as Hebrew Israelites, that's not dealing with that. Because some dealing with that Hebrew Israelite not bringing the whole truth as it should be. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou 
has rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power. The law of our power. There's thy again, which means your. Israelites. He's our power. And because we have forgotten the law of our power, I will also forget thy children. That's why the children have been forgotten. A lot of us, we the children of our forefathers that have been forgotten because they didn't teach us the laws. They were trained, programmed from religious instruction to the Negroes in the United States of America from 1620 on not to teach us the law. Matter of fact, not to even let us read the Bible. And when they had the Bible, they cut a lot of it out, so there wasn't no uprising from what you read in there. I imagine they probably did that after Nat Turner, but uh, at, <laughs> maybe before. But all I know is he did read from what I, I could read of his book and so forth. He read parts where, you know, what made him rise up, you know. But see, we forgot the law of the Most High. And you're taught in churches, these different religions, these secular churches. I call them worldly churches because they're not spiritual. Unless they would be teaching the Judah Israelites, they would take down that picture of the, the white so-called white Caesar boys here, smash it. And everybody in the Bibles that they have is being so-called Caucasian people. We don't even come from Caucasian people. Caucasian people, Caucasian people cannot create us. We can create them because they came from us. Isaac and Rebecca. You see, like we create what they call albinos. They can't create us. You can't get two indigenous so-called white people to create people with melanin and, and pigment. It's just not going to happen. So that's why he's telling us. But this is not a color thing. It's just dealing with the truth. Straight up. It says, Saying thou hast forgotten the law of thy power, I will also forget thy children. As as they were increased, so were, so they sinned against me. Because he gave us the laws, the Israelites, the laws. So as we were increased in numbers, we sinned against the Most High. Even to the point of coming out of Egyptian captivity, we reading about Moses giving us the law. He killed 599,998 men and only left Joshua and Caleb to take the children that we had in those 40 years of the wilderness into the promised land. Sin against him. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. Our glory is our, our women, men. And our women have been changed to shame. It's very shameful. I mean, look how they exploit them. I mean, they love it so. They're doing it themselves. So going back to uh, Psalms 78 and 5. For you established a testimony of Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. You see, we destroyed because we have forgotten the law of the Most High. Which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. We were to make these laws known to the children. That would be born through us. That the generations to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. See? So they declare them to their children. And by doing that, that way, you will know the laws of the Most High. It won't be a problem at all in pleasing Him. The children supposed to teach their children. Then their children teach their children. Verse 7. That they might set their hope in the Most High and not forget the works of the Most High. We're going to look at. This is important. Because the Most High neighbor is jealous. Look. They might not forget the works of the Most High. But keep His commandments over and over again. It's important to see this. It might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart, which is your mind, where you think are right, and whose spirit was not steadfast with the Most High. Look at verse 10. They kept not the covenant of the Most High, who gave it, he gave it to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to the twelve tribes of Israel, and refused to walk in his law. 
as it is today. We ain't under the law. We're under mercy and grace. We've been grafted in. We Gentiles. We're not Israelites. We're not the Jews. The Jews killed Christ. That's a, the the saying that all people that mainly go to church been programmed to say. You got the Holy Ghost? You speak in tongues? I have no idea what they're saying. How many of the Bible say break all that down? Then you'll see what I'm, I know what I'm saying. And I'm not boasting. I'm just saying it's sad because most I don't see nobody perish. But if you don't come back, here's rules and regulations. How you gonna, what do you think of my Shekhar Shad coming back to judge your song? What do you think he coming back to judge your song? The fact that you was a good servant? In captivity? But think again. And forgot his works. Hear that? This is important. We're going to look at this because it's very important that you see this. Because this is what's important to the Most High. Who you call God. Or whatever name you call him. The supreme being of all beings. And forgot his works. And his wonders that he had shown them. See? Let's go back to... Deuteronomy 11, chapter. Verse 3. Well, let's read verse 2 again. And know ye his this day, for I speak not with your children, which have not known, and which have not seen the chastisement of the Most High, your power, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his stretched out arm. So he ain't speaking to them. Go to Deuteronomy 8 and 5. Not to the children, speaking to the adults. Why he killed, like I said, all mostly all the men, but two, and killed all the women. He didn't say no women at all. Deuteronomy 8 and 5. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart, in your mind, that as a man chastens his son, a man's supposed to chasten his son. Now he say that's child abuse. But back in the day, you were chastised by your dad. If you had or daddy. He chastised his son. So the most high thy power chastens this deed. Therefore, this is what he say. He gonna chasten you. He say, therefore, thou shalt keep the commandments of the most high, thy power, to walk in his ways and to fear him. Be afraid of him. See? So, this is what we gotta look at and concentrate on to renew our minds to be righteous in the eyes of the Most High. So, Deuteronomy 11 and 3. And his miracles. And his acts. Which he did in the midst of Egypt unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and unto all his land. This is what he wants us to tell our children. When you go, he did 10 plagues on the Egyptians. He, want us, he wants to be known. Straight up. He wants to be known. Masha Gosha to make himself a reputation, but the most high is a different story. Exodus 34 and 14. But thou shalt worship no other power. For the most high whose name is jealous. You hear that? The Most High, whose name is jealous, is a jealous power. But understand this. This is who we serve. Lest thou make a covenant, a contract, agreement, agree with the inhabitants of the, of the land, even this land, any land that we've been scattered in, and they go a whoring after their gods, that's their religions. You go a whoring after their religions, their gods, because they got different gods up in there. That represent not the same one that I'm talking about. The power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. And one called thee and thou eat of his sacrifice. Now that's going on right now. You over the church, you got Caesar Borgia, that so-called white image up in there. In our churches. In your houses and so forth. And you eat of his sacrifice. That's who you're worshiping. It's right there in front of you. The last supper picture, that lie. You got five people in it, the Borgia family, his family, called the First Crime Family on Showtime, a series called the Borgias, and this is who you worshiping, you're going to horn after other gods. That's their gods. They painted them, 
They lied and painted them white when I'm going on now. That's a lie. So you 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 worshiping a lie. And the most high whose name is jealous is gonna get you for it. He's a jealous power. But you thought you they done taught you he's all love. But when you see hurricanes, tornadoes, and fires and floods and all these disasters, that's from the most high. Most high is visiting and showing up and showing out. But see, you don't know that because you thought he all love. You're going to blame it on the devil. The devil sitting on the curb saying, oh, crying, saying, oh, they blaming everything on me with the most high. Have his hand in everything. And you do evil, you draw evil to you. He's not evil. Everything he does is righteous. It's a righteous judgment. No matter what the outcome is, it's still righteous in the eyes of the Most High. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, Deuteronomy 11 and 3. And his miracles and his acts, which he did in the midst of Egypt unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and unto all his land. Look at Psalm 78 and 12. Psalm 78 and 12. Mosiah showed up in Egypt. That's, why he, that's how he got him a name. With them 10 plagues, everybody knew about the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Psalm 78 and 12. Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers. Hear this? Marvelous things did the Mosiah do in the sight of their fathers, our forefathers. Where? In the land of Egypt, in the field of Zohan. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through, and he made the waters to stand as in heat. Water on this side and water on that side. In the daytime also he led them with the cloud, and all the night with a light of fire. Them the chariots, you see? We're going to look at what he did continually. Psalm 70, 135. Go to the book of Psalms 135. Was he worthy to be praised? But who's really praising him? People praising Israel more than they praising the Most High, or praising themselves. Whatever it is, you hear people praise the Most High once something good happened, but whenever nothing good, I ain't talking about no praise the Most High. Ain't nobody talking about praise the Most High. Only whenever you do something good for them or something that, you know, they desire or they come up. Psalms 135 and 9. Who sent tokens and wonders into the midst of thee, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh and upon all his servants, all those that was rolling with Pharaoh. As he, it says in verse 4, Deuteronomy 11 and 4, and what he did unto the army of Egypt, that's an army of Pharaoh unto their horses and to their chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea to overflow them as they pursued after you, and how the Most High had destroyed them until this day. Hear that? That's what he was teaching our children. Thus say the Most High. That they remember the Most High. They'll know the Most High and fear him too. That's why nobody's afraid or scared of the Most High because ain't nobody talk about the terror of the Most High. The chastisement of the Most High. Who? You don't know nothing about that, so therefore how are you going to fear something that you don't know anything about? You thinking he's all love. Psalms 106. 106 and 11. You see, David is, is, is doing what he's supposed to do. He's an example. These are examples. These are ancestors. Uh, let's, let's look at uh, let's look at um, Psalms 106 and we're going to start at verse verse 7. Our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies. He told us to remember, right? They didn't remember the multitude of his mercies, meaning not getting something you do deserve. But provoked him at the sea, even at the Red Sea. What we're going to do now, Moses? Oh, we're going to die. 
seeing various uh, pharaohs, chariots coming after us and his men, his armies. Oh, we're going to die. Listen, nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake. Hear that? He saved us for his name's sake. Not for our name's sake, but his name's sake. That he might make his mighty power be known. Come on. Tell you, he put the sea, red, red, part of the Red Sea, made a wall on this side and a wall on that side, and we walked across on dry ground. That's a miracle. You see? He rebuked the Red Sea also, and it was dried up, as I said. It was dried up. So he led them through the depths as through the wilderness, walking on dry ground. As the waters on both sides of us. And he saved them from the hand of him that hated them. See, but no love in this. He saved us from the hand of him that hated us. And redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. And the waters covered their enemies. Not our friends. The waters covered our enemies. There was not one of them left. Didn't believe that his words. They sang his praise. Always got to be an action. We require a sign. Then we're going to praise him. First we was talking about what we going to do, man. Most of you brought us here to die. We should have stayed back in Egypt. Always complaining and murmuring. But no city did. Like I said, no city do something good and all praise the most high. Before that, you ain't praising the most high. A lot of you don't praise the most high. You praise yourself as an Israelite or as or as a Gentile Israelite or whoever you are. You praising yourself. The most high, whose name is jealous, is a jealous power. But understand. You can do nothing except for he allowed it to go down. But once that happened, then they sang praise to him. But listen, but they soon forgot his works, see? Soon for God is works. Just these are solutions that we don't need to do. You gotta look at this and read it to it so you can see what not to do, since his name is jealous. They soon forgot his works. They waited not for his counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted the most high in the desert. See. It's cold. We're cold better people, bro. They soon forgot his works. See, that all he did ten plagues on the Egyptians, and nothing happened to us as the Israelites. And you're seeing all these plagues happen to these other nations, especially the Egyptians. And nothing's happened to us. That's a miracle in itself. Besides opening up the Red Sea, I mean, all the different plagues, ten plagues he put upon them. Nothing happened to us. That's enough to praise him there. But they didn't. Verse 15. Psalms 106 and 15. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. They envied Moses also in the camp, and Aaron the saint of the Most High. How you envy someone that bringing you salvation? Bringing you to a land that's filled with milk and honey, it says. A fertile land. Giving you freedom. But they envy Moses. That's what, that's, this is our people. Envying each other. Hating on each other. Those that can help them to see salvation. At least help their name be written in the book of life. They hating on them. The most I know. You know who they are. Because it's been written in the book. So when the judge, judgment seat is open, then you're going to be dealt with. That's why we got to really, really look at this and not be as our ancestors were. The ones that didn't follow the righteousness of the Most High. Deuteronomy 11 and 4. And what he did unto the army of Egypt, unto their horses, and to their chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea to overflow them as they pursued after you. And how the Most High had destroyed them unto this day. 
destroyed them until this day. Once that happened, with well, no Egypt. Ain't nobody took over no Egypt after that. Because the most I had his hand in it. Beautiful, man. Look at, um, go to uh, Acts, the seventh chapter. And let's look at, um, Acts the seventh chapter, verse thirty. It says, and, the, and when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Most High in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, and as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Most High came unto him, which is the word of the Most High. Which is the angel of the Most High, which is a Mashiach Kawashai, as you know him as so called Jesus Christ, but as a spirit of the Most High or an angel of the Most High, saying, I am the power of thy fathers, through the Most High, saying, through the angel, as the angel always spoke to us, the power of Abraham, and the power of Isaac, and the power of Jacob. So if you don't come out of the 12 tribes of Israel, then he's not your power, he's not your God. You can make it any way you want to. By say whatever you want to say, but you can't go into this Bible and prove that because he says he's the power of Abraham, power of Isaac, and the power of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and does not behold, scared him. Then said the Most High to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. So he told him to take off his shoes. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people which is in Egypt. And I have heard their groanings. You see we say, my people, who are the Israelites. For all you that New Testament buffs, scholars and so forth, my people who are the Israelites, which is in Egypt. And I have heard their groaning, their cries, crying out to the Most High, the only time he redeemed us. And have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt. Into Egypt. Then Moses, whom they refused, saying, who made thee a ruler and a judge? Who you think you are? Remember they envied, they envied uh, Moses. Who made thee a ruler and a judge? Same did the Most High sin to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel, which appeared to him in the bush. But see, people don't really understand the angel was speaking for the Most High. It's the same spirit of the Most High that's in Genesis the first chapter, Genesis the second chapter, Genesis the... Uh, first chapter of 26 verse. We say, let's go down and make man in our image and our likeness. The same spirit of the Most High, the angel of the Most High, that's in verse 2. That started to create everything, as the Most High told us in Ephesians 3 and 9. The mystery of the Most High that's not known, that's hid in the Most High, who created all things by Hamashiach Yahushai. But if you can't put it together to see, okay, well, he was created as a spirit, an angel, before he came in the flesh. And you have a, you're still in gross darkness. As most I told uh, the Edomites, when they go into darkness, they put the people in gross darkness. what they have done. And you're still there. You've got to come out of that. Verse 36, he brought them out after that he had sworn, excuse me, had shown wonders and signs in the land of Egypt. The ten plagues. Same thing we're reading over and over again. This is what we're supposed to teach our children. You think it's not important? Why, why am I going to different places? You see the same thing written. And in the Red Sea. And in the wilderness 40 years. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall the most high your power raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. 
him shall ye hear. This is he. This, this is he that was in the church in the wilderness. Who's in the wilderness? The children of Israel. That's the church. With the angel. See, with the angel. With the angel. I gotta say it again. With the angel of the Most High, that's speaking for the Most High, which spake to, see, here it is, which spake, see it? With the angel that spake to him in the Mount Sinai. So it's the angel that's speaking to Moses in the Mount Sinai. The voice of the Most High, the angel brought the word of the Most High. And we know that Amashiach Yavashai clearly is the word of the Most High. From a voice come words. But if you can't figure that out, I don't know. It's, it's, it's too simple. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. Are you with me? And with our fathers who received the law of the oracles to give unto us, to whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them. Get him out of here. I don't want to hear that. And in their hearts, in their minds, turn back again into Egypt. Saying in the Aaron, make us gods to go before us. For as for this Moses, when he went up in the mount, and the angel was speaking to him, the words of the Most High, hearing the voice of the Most High, Speaking the words of the Most High, saying to Aaron, left Aaron down there with the people, make us gods to go before us. As for this Moses, which brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wrought not what has become of him. He been gone 40 days. That's one thing about us, about us boy. We have no patience. No patience. Straight up. And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifices to the idol and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Mm -hmm. Going back to Deuteronomy 11, chapter, verse 5. And what he did unto you in the wilderness until you came into this place. Knowing what he did to us in the wilderness until we came into the place or the promised land, the land of Canaan. And what he did unto Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, the son of Reuben, how the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their households, and their tents, and all the substance that was in their possession in the midst of all Israel. Did this all in the midst of us? Go to Deuteronomy 6, I mean, excuse me, Numbers. The 16th chapter talks about that. Let's read about it. How he opened up the ground and swallowed up, swallowed them up. Number 16 and 1. Now Korah, the son of Ishar, the son of Koresh, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram. And we're talking about them. Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. They didn't, just a coup. They didn't, put, they didn't created a coup against Moses. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the most high is among them. Wherefore then lift up ye yourselves above the congregation of the most high. Everybody the same. Everybody got the same position. You and Aaron think y'all something? We all the same. Sound familiar? And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. When he heard that, he fell upon his face. They come at what? 250 men. Against Moses and Aaron. So Moses fell upon his face and he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Most High will show who is his and who is holy and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. This do. Take your censors, Korah, and all his company 
and put fire therein and put incense in them before the Most High tomorrow. It shall be that the man whom the Most High does choose, he shall be holy. You take too much upon you, you sons of Levi. Moses come back at him and say, hey, you think you somebody. You know, you take it too much upon yourself, you sons of Levi. Levi were the priests. And Moses said unto Korah, Here I pray you, ye sons of Levi, see that it but a little thing unto you, that the most high power of Israel have separated you from the congregation of Israel, to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of the most high, and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. And he hath brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and seek ye the priesthood also. So you want to be in my place also? For which cause but both thou, thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Most High. And what is Aaron that you murmur against him? Say, who is Aaron that you murmur against my brother? Aaron. And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said, we will not come up. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness? except thou make thyself also a prince over us. It's all about jealousy. This pride, envy, and jealousy right here. This cool that they're trying to pull. Everybody want to be somebody. Moses already said, hey, he dealing with Moses. Go back go back to, because uh, Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses. And Mo Moses had turned Miriam white as snow. He made her leprous, like the palm of your hand, like the palm, the bottom of your feet. <clears throat> Numbers 12 and 8. With him, talk about Moses, will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Most High shall he behold. Therefore, then, were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Most High was kindled against them, and he departed. And when he departed, and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, the chariot left the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. Okay? That's why you got to watch what you do. People think, okay, we all the same. Everybody the same. No, we're not. Even until this day. But let them tell it. They are. We all the same. So go back to... Uh, Number 16. Number 1611. For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Most High. And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Le Eliab, which said, We will not come up. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought up, brought us up out of the land of, that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us? Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey or give, given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Will thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. Say, we ain't coming up. We ain't following you. And Moses was very wroth. He got angry and said unto the Moses,